Hello, my name is Patrick Knight. I'm the Head of Chemistry here at Bablake, and I'm hoping over the next five minutes or so to explain what it's like to study A-level chemistry here. First of all, what's in the course? What do we study at A-level chemistry? Uh, be reassured that it is a natural extension of what you've studied at GCSE, whether you've done a GCSE in chemistry as a separate science or part of a double award um, GCSE science, you will be perfectly prepared for doing A-level chemistry. We will take the ideas of materials and their properties and explaining how they behave, develop those and add a lot more detail and extend the knowledge to more modern theories. The course is split into the three traditional areas of chemistry, which is physical chemistry, organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry. And it's worth pointing out that we use experiments, practical chemistry, wherever we can to help with the teaching and to help with the understanding. That's what's in the course. I want to get the nasty bit over next, which is how the course is assessed at the end of your two years. Uh, there are three papers at the end. Each one is two hours long. This is common to all A-levels, so you'll be familiar with that structure uh, from the other subjects as well. Paper one and paper two both have content which is specified as to half the course approximately in each. And paper three is what's known as a synoptic assessment, where you cover anything from the two years course. So that's the assessment, the exams at the end. And the style of questions is very varied. There are three types of questions. You've got multiple choice, short answer questions, and long answer questions. Multiple choice is usually what pupils look forward to most. However, they are the most challenging questions, and they do actually do the best job of separating and grading the different candidates. So beware, it's not an easy ride when it gets to multiple choice. In chemistry, a long answer question is up to six marks. Generally, it involves six points in a mark scheme, so there is no need for extended prose. You can actually write in bullet points if prose is something you want to avoid. So in terms of other A-level subjects that involves essays, long answer is a bit of a misnomer. Uh, short answer questions tend to be a calculation or else a one or two word um, explanation that's required of you. So a mixture of all three styles of questions in all three papers. Now that's the assessment at the end. Okay, what is the structure of A-level chemistry? Over the two years of the course, each year spirals round into the three traditional sections of chemistry, which are physical chemistry, organic chemistry, and inorganic chemistry. Physical chemistry is chemistry with numbers in, uh, which involves calculations. So anything that uh, involves moles or masses or volumes will be physical chemistry. Organic chemistry, focuses on the chemistry of carbon compounds, and that gets a third of chemistry to itself, just the element carbon, or inorganic chemistry is everything else, the rest of the hundred or so elements in the periodic table. Why does carbon get a third of chemistry to itself? Two reasons. Firstly, it um, forms the most compounds of any element that there is, billions and billions of them, and secondly, the importance of those compounds to life itself um, and understanding why we are like we are is why it gets a third of chemistry to itself. So that's organic, inorganic and physical chemistry and you'll do roughly equal amounts of each in the first year and the second year. We spiral back round. That's the structure of the course. That's the exams in the course. What about coursework? Well there isn't any and there's a but coming here as you can see. Um, practicals, the experiment side of chemistry, absolutely essential to understanding chemistry but also essential to researching new chemistry and both your exam board and the teachers here at Bab Lake believe it's absolutely crucial. To reflect this in the exams there are 12 compulsory practicals that all students should have studied and you will do those. They are examined in the exam papers at the end so that's one part of making sure that everybody who does an A-level in chemistry does plenty of practical work. The other side is something called practical endorsements. When you finish your a level, you will get a grade and a pass or fail in practical endorsement. And if you want to study science or anything scientific at university, that is a prerequisite. What is practical endorsement? Um, it is five areas of competence that you need to show by the time you get to the end of your course. Those five are, can you follow a set of written instructions correctly? Can you work safely? Can you correctly record any numerical values in a lab book? 
Um, can you work investigatively and uh, make your own decisions in a practical? And can you reference other people's research correctly? So those are five key skills that the science departments at universities have identified. And anybody with an A-level who wants to study science should show mastery of those five competencies. And historically, since this model has been in place, every single pupil at Bab Lake has had a pass. It is nothing to fear. Perfection is not expected. Um, you will develop your skills as you move through the two years. Now, that is all teacher assessed. It's in normal lessons. There is not a practical exam or anything like that. And uh, the important message is to keep relaxed about it. It's nothing to get stressed about. Now, practical endorsement done. Uh, who should be studying A-level chemistry? Most importantly, are you interested in materials, how they behave, and understanding why they behave like they do, both for things we can measure and on a microscopic scale of atoms, ions, and molecules, or protons, neutrons, and electrons, if we get even smaller? That is the main um, prerequisite. If you're interested in it, it will be fun. You will enjoy it. Secondly, if you're after an A-level qualification that demonstrates A, you can work practically in a laboratory, B, you're numerate, C, you can think analytically and analyse large amounts of information, you need a certain amount of memory, so it reflects that, and finally, a certain kind of intelligence that can understand and cope with some of the abstract concepts that come in when we look at the theory of subatomic particles and um, explaining how that connects to what we can measure in real life. So if you are interested in those and having a qualification that reflects those, take A-level chemistry. Um, do you need chemistry for your degree course? If you're thinking of university already, if it's got chemistry in the title, obviously you need to uh, have an A-level in chemistry. Things that don't have chemistry in the title include chemical engineering, forensic sciences, pharmacology, biochemistry, they all need an A-level in chemistry. If you're thinking of becoming a doctor, not all, but most medical courses require um, a high grade in A-level chemistry to get on. If you're thinking of becoming a doctor and don't want to do A-level chemistry, do your research first. Make sure you know which universities will accept an application without an A-level in chemistry. Uh, that's the university side. Getting towards the end, how have pupils done in the past at Bab Lake? Um, I've put up the percentages for the last three years of candidates who've scored an A star, an A or a B, and we're looking in the 70s to 80s of percents, which is very good results. This is not um, a reflection of how easy A-level chemistry is. It's a reflection of the dedication and hard work um, that those pupils are put in to get that level of success. And those results are pretty much the last thing I want to say. I want to hand you over to some more important people, some pupils currently in the upper sixth coming to the end of the first half term of the upper sixth and what they think about A-level chemistry. What are the good bits? What are the challenging bits? And is there anything they wish they'd known when they were a year 11 pupil? I find the physical side of chemistry quite challenging because I don't do maths and keeping up with the notes whilst maintaining prior knowledge is also quite difficult. I enjoy the chemistry A-level course as it's interesting and engaging. I believe it's built on the foundation of GCSE quite nicely through the transition into the AS. Um, I wish I'd known that the step up between GCSE and AS level chemistry was quite big. <laughs>